uh, officials from the Provincial Education Department. Jefferson, we, we're still waiting for members to sign in. I currently only have myself and Honorable Yabo present. Um, if you'll just give it a few more minutes, Jefferson, thank you. I will see well as the Uh, good morning, uh, Chairperson. I uh, hope you can hear me. Uh, morning, uh, uh, Deputy Minister, officials from the Provincial Education Department. Chairperson, I will hand over to you. Uh, we do have a quorum. No, thank you very much, uh, Liveli. And morning to everybody that is in the meeting. Uh, morning, DM. Um, Morning. I'm not sure if the DG is back and is in the meeting or are we still having uh, Dr. Whittle acting? But anyway, morning um, to the MECs. We are supposed to be having three MECs in the meeting, Llewellyn. Um, Free State, Northern Cape and Western Cape. <clears throat> And yeah, that is then morning to to the officials from provinces as well, and the people that have um, joined our meeting. I I'm, I'm I'm requesting not to open my video. Um, we are having um load shedding this side. Um, so I'm I'm just worried of my bandwidth. Uh, Miss Miss Gaya, you um your hand is up. Uh, yes, good morning, honourable chairperson, and good morning to all the honourable members in the house, and also good morning to DM. I just wanted to indicate that uh, DG is back uh, from leave, and uh, he is currently uh, travelling in the provinces. I think he's in the Eastern Cape or in Limpopo. I'm not too sure which one. Uh, but he he is not um, able to connect right now. He will most likely connect um, if he's, if he's able to. So he's asked me to lead the delegation at the MSAMI on behalf of DG. 
and I'm also tabling his apologies if um, he's not able to go, to join us. Thank you very much. Okay then. Um, thank you very much, Ms. Gay. So you acting? You acting now? Uh, no, DM, I'm not acting. I'm just um, uh. assisting DG. Uh, sorry, um, Chairperson, Honourable Chairperson, I am just assisting the DG. I'm not. I'm not formally acting okay. because he's formally on duty. He's just uh, having network problems. Okay. No, it's fine then. Um, can we do the roll call, Evelyn, quickly? Thank you, Chairperson. I uh, have yourself, Honourable Binka Gigaba. I have Honourable Adwins, Honourable Siwela, Honourable Yabo, Honourable Morwa Setla, Honourable Nodada, Honourable Van der Valt, and Honourable Sukers. Honourable Sukers had indicated that she needs to, to leave the meeting uh, probably in the next hour for another uh, commitment meeting. I have an apology from Honourable uh, Masha Bella, as well as Honourable Dr. Tembe Kwayo. Then, of course, from the department, uh, I have, uh, well, I had an original apology for Dr. Mahole, but I see she is in the meeting. Uh, also, an apology for Minister, uh, who is currently abroad. Uh, uh, and then uh, Ms. Gaya did indicate the apology for the DG for connectivity problems, but he will join us uh, when he's able to. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay, uh, can you Chairperson, like... Excuse me. Yes, Papa. I'm also here, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Oh, Llewellyn, you didn't acknowledge the presence of Bob Thank you, Thank you, Chairperson. Sure. Um, members on the agenda today, we... Yes, DM? Yeah, when we are still uh, on the apologies, Chair, I have an agent, agent uh, call, so I will just be present in the first uh, part of the meeting, then I will leave the meeting. If I finish that other thing, I may join the meeting, but I may not. Thank you. That's why I, I sent an apology. Okay, dear. That's fine. Um, members on the agenda, we are having the status reports on, uh, status reports on the implementation of the committee recommendation on an oversight we had in Free State, Western Cape and Northern Cape early this year. Um, this is a continuation of the meeting we had um, last week when we had um, Northwest in the in the in the committee. So after that, we will deal with the um, um, deliberation, and then after that, we will adopt the minutes of the of the previous meeting. Can I then ask members to adopt the agenda? Chairperson, my name is Ronnie Murateta. I move that this agenda be adopted as is. Thank you, Principal. Any second? Uh, Honorable Chairperson, it's Honorable. Uh, I second adoption of the uh, agenda. I know I wasn't uh, uh, attending, but uh, uh, I am adopting, adopting the, uh, uh, the, uh, the agenda. Yes. Um, DM, can I hand over to you to, to lead us with um, a political overview there? Thank you. Thank you so much, Chair. Greetings to you. Greetings to the honorable members in the house. And greetings to the DG if he is recording in progress. Connected and the, all the leadership from the Department of Basic Education. Greetings to MEC Monakali. I saw him and I saw the HOD from Western Cape and the the Free State, I see the, there are some officials from Free State, but the MEC, I don't see him that he has joined the meeting. Maybe he will join later. Uh, uh, the meeting, DM. Oh, thank you, MEC. <laughs> when I was checking, going through the list, I didn't see your name. Thank you so much. Greetings to you, MEC, uh, Free State, and uh, 
all officials from the ministry and the department. Minister, uh, Chair, I think this thing is coming. You're called TM now, I'm calling you Minister. Uh, Chair, we really appreciate as the department and the, the sincere apology about what happened last week with free states and the misunderstandings that were there, but we sorted our house is now clean. Uh, also with the Western Cape Chair, I want to sincerely apologize also that uh, the report only came yesterday to the portfolio committee. Uh, so it, that's our apologies, like I indicated even last time, that we're not looking down upon the committee. We really appreciate the work that the committee is doing uh, because we don't just take it that you are uh, playing a, 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 I don't know, a, a super boss, but you are working with us, uh, holding us accountable, which is a good thing, and uh, also assisting us on the things where we don't see. So we, we really appreciate and welcome. So we have the three provinces present today, led by DTG Gaya on behalf of the DG, who is back from leave, uh, Chair. You, you know, DG likes the ground. He is on the ground working. So he is back and uh, full force. I think he rested uh, this, this time because he needed it. So with your permission, Chair, allow me to give to DDG Gaya or you, you do it yourself. And my sincere apologies, I will only be here for the first part, then I will leave the meeting. Thank you. Ms. Gaya, thank you, DM. Um, thank you so much, Honorable Chairperson. Um, so, Chair, I think that uh, we we are here to hear the three presentations from the provinces. Um, these uh, presentations emanate from um, issues that were raised on the oversight visits and that uh, provinces are here to speak to the issues. And uh, without much ado, I think we, we should allow then that uh, the various um, leaders of the delegations of the provinces through the MECs of these provinces um, actually speak to the issues they are best um, able to address the issues that they are here to speak on. And um, we will uh, respond from our side later on what we have done in relation to some of the issues that are existing in uh, the provinces. Um, we, we are here to support and to provide information uh, um, that can assist as well. So thank you very much, Chairperson. Over to you. No, thank you, Ms. Gea. I, um, Western Cape, is it is it led by HOD? Do you have an MEC yet or what is going on? Chairperson, I do see in the house, Mr. Mayor, and I also see um, Mr. Nyker, Dr. Nyker, and I. those are two uh, departmental officials from the Western Cape that I take it would uh, um, speak to the presentation. And there's also Ms. Daniels that's in house from uh, the Western Cape. No, 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 I'm, I'm raising that because, yes, who's talking? This is Alan Mayer. I'm from the Western Cape Education Department. Unfortunately, our minister is recovering. Um, he was off last week with COVID um, and unfortunately unable to be in this meeting. You can understand his program has been backed up for a week. And our HOD is currently, unfortunately, in interviews. So I've been asked to, to lead the panel uh, from the Western Cape side. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. But anyway, uh, members, um, I think the DM has as 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 quickly spoken on the issue that Western Cape only um, gave us their presentation yesterday, um, just a few minutes after three, we received the, the 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 presentation, and their situation is the same as the Free State. Um, what had happened um, in the Free State with their um, presentation last week. That's why we couldn't um, proceed with free state. So I'm allowing members to deliberate on the matter. What do we do 
um, because we did not have an opportunity then. And I mean, departments know they are not supposed to give us presentations um, so late. Um, principal, your hand is up. And myself too, honor Jefferson and Trump. Good morning, and good morning to everybody on this all important platform. Portfolio committee on page. Principal, are you still in the meeting? We lost you. Yes. I, you I thought, can you hear me, Chairperson? I can hear you now, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Maybe it's because of the waves, because of load shedding, which goes in and out. In and out. Chairperson. Yeah, it's because of the phone. It interrupted you. But can you hear proceed. Can you proceed? Proceed. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much, Chair. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you see, I wanted us to say, can we kindly be consistent as the portfolio committee? They would normally say what you do on your left must equally be done on the right. Last week, we met, we experienced almost a similar situation with the free state. And the, given the fact that our researchers were not accorded space to go through all those recommendations and the responses, I mean, the responses to our recommendations, we requested Free State to go and uh, come another day. And uh, I will humbly request that we do the same with the Western Cape. And so I submit to the student. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, uh, Honorable Members uh, of our Portfolio Committee and uh, the Department um, uh, 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 and all the officials present. Look, uh, Chairperson, I know, <clears throat> for instance, I, I, I had already uh, said uh, I, 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 I wasn't there. Uh, however, I have a right to benefit from uh, the, pre the presentation. Uh, I had stated my reasons. Uh, and um, now the submission wa wa was, was very late indeed. And uh, that is not uh, on. It's not going to help us much. And I definitely support uh, the proposal by uh, uh, the Honorable Mbras Atla. Uh, that no, we do not discuss the, uh, uh, the report. Thank you, Bapu Novo. Honorable Suela. Yeah, President, thank you very much. I am covered by both uh, the principal, uh, by both the principal. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Van der Waal. Um, Chair, good morning, colleagues. Uh, Chair, uh, I mean, I, whatever the committee decide for the sake of fairness, I just want to note that it be recorded that it was mentioned that the Minister of Basic Education in the Western Cape last week was off sick on COVID. So obviously, I'm not sure what the procedure in each province is, but I know that several MECs look at the presentations before they are forward to the committee or the department. So just take that into consideration that it is not by neglect. It might be due to this to the unforeseen circumstance. And I just wanted to put that. I do agree the researchers of us in the committee might have a challenge, but I just thought it would be worthwhile to note the difference why things were received the previous day at three o'clock. It's not impossible for us as members to work through it, but yeah, they are researchers to be considered. Thank you, Chair. No, thank you very much, um, Honorable van der Waal. Um, DM, we are unfortunately not going to take um, Western Cape um, to do their presentation today. We will uh, let them know when they can come 
um, um, to do the presentation. Thank and on that you. note, on that note, then I am allowing the MEC of Free State um, to lead the the presentation of Free State, and for obvious reasons, because we had turned them back, so probably we it's fair just we allow them to present first. Um, MEC Free State. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, and thank you very much for the indulgence of the committee that uh, you were able to give us one more time. Uh, and uh, let me also thank the, the members of the committee and then uh, our deputy minister and, and everybody who's present here. Chairperson, I think we, we don't want to waste a lot of time. Just want to indicate that uh, in our team, we've got uh, our HOD um, advocate Malagwani. We've got uh, our DTG uh, for curriculum and districts, uh, Mr. Sitole. We've got uh, uh, our chief director, Mr. Mokobo, and then uh, one district director for uh, Moteo, Tate uh, Moloi, December Moloi. So I think, Chairperson, instead of uh, wasting a lot more time, let us. Uh, ask Mr. Sitole to make a presentation on our behalf. And I've realized uh, in the last time when we were part of the meeting that uh, there's quite a number of uh, questions of follow-up that comes. So maybe we must spare our efforts to try and explain when that time comes. For now, let's ask a uh, chairperson through you, uh, Mr. Sitole, the DTG, uh, to make a presentation on our behalf. Thank you very much. Dr. Stolle? No, it's, okay. Uh, okay, can I proceed, Chair? Oh, yeah, well. yeah um, it, It's not Dr. Stolle, it's, it's just the MMC Tolle. Uh, I, I will be presenting on behalf of the oh, Free State. Okay. Uh, Say, so Dr. Stolle is at national, maybe uh, at the but it's fine. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what is happening with your. What is happening with your. With your uh, data story. I'm not certain, is it better now? Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, we can see you now. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, <clears throat> uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Chairperson, um, other members of the committee um, from the National Assembly, uh, the MECs who are present and my colleagues from national and, and the province. We will be presenting on uh, four schools, uh, two from Moteo district and two from um, Lezolopuza district. Uh, the other reports that are in the slides have just been added just for completeness uh, because we know that uh, the committee visited the various schools, maybe they would find it interesting and um, useful as well, just to look at other reports. But uh, the first report that we'll be doing will be from the Motero district. And <clears throat> if it can be flighted, Shay, it is going to be Irstelem uh, Primary School. I'll just wait for confirmation that the... Who's flighting the, the, the presentation of the state, Mr. Mara? Chairperson, uh, uh, can I can I assist with flighting yes. the, the presentation? Yes. If you just give me yes. one second. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not sure if members will be able to see that. Yes, we can um, see. It. I can see. It. Just want to just make it, it. Um, one slide. There we go. Thank you, Chair. Yes. Yes, then we'll go to the slide that uh, says, as it's heading, Ear Stalin Primary School. 
I think that should be the third slide. Second or third slide. Yes, that's it. <clears throat> the gap that was identified uh, was that we needed to ensure that the school is prioritized for extra classrooms uh, to accommodate the various grades individually. And we are reporting that uh, the school is on schedule to receive two mobile classrooms uh, by June uh, of this year. The second gap was um, we must review any decision on the non viability of the school and support the school to attract more learners. Um, so I'm just indicating that uh, the decision uh, to, to rationalize the school uh, has been reviewed. And uh, that the school will be supported uh, to increase learner enrollment to above 100 learners. So the next school that will be reporting uh, for would be um, Leti Fushie Special School. It is also in, from Moteo. The gap that was identified was that we needed to ensure that the school is prioritized for asbestos removal, as well as renovation and refurbishment uh, of the girls' hostel within 120 days after the adoption of the report. Uh, the as asbestos removal uh, and the refurbishment of the girls' hostel are on the priority list uh, of the department. And the bid on this will be adjudicated by, by the bid evaluation committee on the 26th of May. The second gap that was identified was that the flooding and drainage challenges uh, needed to be addressed. So we are reporting that the flooding and drainage challenges are part of the bill of quantities for the removal of the asbestos and the refurbishment of the girls hostel as indicated above. So we can move on to the next slide. Chairperson, am I still audible? Yes, we are audible, but I don't know whether you are busy with your phone, you've neglected the presentation, or what is going on, Mr. Stoll? No, I'm still with the presentation. I just wanted to make sure that the right slide is, is, a, is, a, is, is flighted. It's Letty Foucher now. Okay, the, the second gap that was identified was we needed to ensure that the school is assisted uh, with recruitment of therapies and, and, the, and the hostel mother before the end of the second term school calendar. So I indicated that uh, approval has been granted for the physiotherapist to assume duty on the 1st of June and that the, the senior occupational therapist and the speech therapist posts have been advertised and the assumption of duty is expected to be in July of this year. Uh, the senior hostel supervisor has been appointed and has assumed duty on the 1st of April. So uh, some appointments have been made to, to fill that gap. The next gap that has been identified, the next slide, Uh, 
the, we, the department must consider to include the school on the scholar transport program. Uh, we are indicating there that uh, the school is already on the learner transport program where they were given two options where the department would give them a once off allocation to purchase a vehicle and take responsibility for running costs. And the second option was for the school to be allocated a budget to appoint and pay service providers for trans transportation of learners monthly. And the school uh, opted for option one and they were given funding uh, but they've encountered uh, some challenges on the running costs and the, the school has, has therefore requested to be put on option two for the following financial year. So we can then go to the next district uh, and the school would be Let's just go past a few slides and go to leisurely put a report. So we pass with this one. Yes, Ben's play. We pass, we pass, we pass. We pass. Yeah, leisurely put a report. And the school that we'll be reporting on would be Lissading Technical School. Uh, the gap, we needed to ensure that the school was prioritized for refurbishment maintenance and, and renovations, uh, sp specifically the paving, fencing, and electrification. Uh, the submission for the fence was made uh, in, in last year already, and the, the process is underway uh, to make sure that the other items there are also sorted out. Uh, the other gap was that we needed to ensure that the school remained on programs and plans for building uh, of a new kitchen. And this is included in the provincial plan uh, for 2023 financial year. Uh, ensure that the school drainage system is upgraded and repaired. Uh, there has been discussion between the school and the municipality. Uh, and a site survey has been done by the municipality. So the process is underway to, to, to eventually sort out the, 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 the flooding uh, next to the school. <clears throat> Another gap that was identified, we needed to review the school's current PPN to ensure that it is treated as a technical school and not an ordinary school. Uh, the progress that we're indicating is that the school was allocated Pose, uh, specifically for physical sciences to ensure that the challenges that have been identified are addressed. And the submission has been sent through so that uh, when, when we revise the, the PPN this year, uh, by the time that, we, that it is finalized in August, September, uh, the other challenges would have been addressed, accommodated for the uh, for the next year. The next gap, it was in collaboration with sister departments and relevant stakeholders, ensure that the school is considered for scholar transport yeah, to protect learners. The, the policy that we have in the province for now uh, only accommodates farm school learners as, as beneficiaries. And the, the school and the district uh, is, is, is having discussions um, with possible funders uh, or stakeholders to see whether we can be able to assist the school. But the policy assistance for now benefits uh, farm school learners and this particular school is in a township setting. The next school that we'll be reporting against uh, it is Seabo Primary School, which will be our last report. Uh, we needed to ensure that the school is prioritized for receiving a mobile library, extra classroom, staff room, and mobile toilets as per the request from the school within adequate timeframes. 
And we are indicating this progress that the need was confirmed and the submission has been made to head office infrastructure. Uh, the intervention has been prioritized and was brought forward from the initial plan of 2024. But uh, we are also indicating that uh, two mobile uh, library trolleys were delivered to the school uh, with books. Uh, we needed to ensure the last gap that the school fencing is a place or refurbished within 90 days of adoption of the report. Uh, submission for the fence was made. Uh, the, the process to sort out this problem was started last year already and the education is completed. So the process is underway to meet that challenge as well. Uh, Honorable Chair, that, that was our last report. Thank you very much, and that is Let me see Northern Cape. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, Honorable uh, Deputy Minister, Honorable Members of the Committee present, uh, the DG National, if the DG is in the meeting, all colleagues from province and national, Thank you very much for the opportunity on behalf of the Northern Cape Education Department to be given an opportunity to give a progress report on the issues that was identified during the visit of the Portfolio Committee to the province. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, I am accompanied by the head of department, Ms. Moira Mare, who is also being accompanied by other members from the senior management. With your permission, the Chair, not to delay anything, I will request to give over to the HOD to lead us in the presentation from the Northern Cape Education Department. Thank you very much, sir. HOD? Thank you, MEC. HOD? Good morning, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, um, MEC. Um, we are ready with the presentation, um, Honorable uh, Chairperson. Um, in the boardroom with me, uh, we have our DDG for curriculum, Dr. Ishmael. I have Mr. Brian White, responsible for IMGD. I have Mr. Alistair uh, Andrews in, in my office. I have someone from um, infrastructure. Um, and there's someone from HR also on the platform. I will immediately um, go on with the presentation. Um, my name is Moira Mare. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was just telling me I must introduce myself, Honorable Chair. My name is Moira Mare. I'm the head of department for Northern Cape Department of Education. Um, our presentation will cover the recommendations and responses on the oversight visits uh, to the schools in the ZF Ngawu district and also um, in Francis Bar district, um, as was visited. Um, by the, the chair and, and members of the portfolio committee. In the ZFM district, um, we were at Aitza uh, Primary School. Um, Just a minute, HOT. Um, yes, ma'am. I'm not sure with other members whether it's my screen that doesn't. Um, it only says Alistair, Alistair Andrews has started screen sharing. Yeah, what is the view with other members? Okay. Any member nothing? Chief, Chief is not saying anything, Chair. It's the same. There's Chief nothing. Is... Yes. Oh, they can't. Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll start again, Chair. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. Okay. Sorry about that, Chair. Um, we will uh, go to the first school which was um, that was visited, which was Aitza uh, Primary School. First recommendation was to ensure that the school in collaboration with SUPS was adequately secured and the area was regularly patrolled to, to prevent vandalism and burglaries. 
for now, we have a new adopt a cop that was allocated to the school. Um, and then also correspondence went out from the district office to the station commander in Frobler's work, uh, through which we requested more uh, regular patrols, um, especially after hours and weekends and, and holidays. Honorable members will remember this was the, the small um, farm school and it's, it's kind of quite isolated, the location. There's no other closed buildings which makes the school vulnerable um, to, to vandalism and, and burglaries. Then also there was a request um, that the school is understaffed in terms of the post uh, uh, establishment norms. We have then gone back and looked and one additional post has been allocated to, to the primary school. Also, there was um, a complaint about the toilet structures uh, that were unfinished and that these must be properly handed over to the school. Um, we did uh, uh, afterwards find out or we, we, we ascertained that the school receives a maintenance allocation and we have requested them uh, to address some of the, uh, the minor maintenance challenges. And then an inspector was also instructed to go back to the ablution facilities and compile a new cost estimate for the work that still needs to be done. Um, safe to say on the issue of infrastructure, honorable chair and members, there is what we call our infrastructure plan for the year and on the table B5, which is what we submit to Treasury as well as to, uh, to DBE. Um, and when we want to make changes uh, to that, we are only allowed to make changes during the budget adjustment process. So on any of the infrastructure matters that we pick up, it's not on the current program. What we have to do is, is to reschedule it um, and then submit uh, for, 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 for changing or inclusion on the table B5 um, during the adjustment process. Uh, furthermore, um, there was the issue of scholar transport as um, the, there was a request that we need to, to consider that as an exceptional case. Uh, given the fact, um, honorable members will remember we had a long discussion about uh, what the norms are saying with regards to the distance that learners must reside. And uh, there was a request that we that we need to uh, make an exception for these uh, small kids. The recommendation, therefore, concerning the learner transport was referred to the ZFM district office um, for further investigation and then to look at a way in which we can uh, support the learners for, 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 for additional transport. In the meantime, the current arrangement is continuing uh, where the parents uh, who, who are able uh, to, 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 to give um, that 100 rand amount that they were talking about, uh, where there is support from the farmers in the, in the vicinity to, 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 to transport the learners. Then also there was the issue of the landowner um, because this is not our school, this is, uh, we are leasing the building on the private um, land of, of, of the owner. Um, um, the lady there complained that there's outstanding money that the department owes them in terms of, 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 of um, lease. Uh, we did investigate the matter. Um, the matter is not yet settled, honorable chairperson, because the landlord um, for any person to be paid by government, they have to follow a registration process on CSD. And they've been having problems ever since. We've sent them the documents. They've been having problems because they have to register via provincial treasury. And we are still trying to assist them uh, to complete the registration process. There's, the issue with them is that um, the farm is registered in the name of the, the lady who spoke to us. It's her dad's farm but they are farming on the farm and the bank account details that they gave to Treasury did not correspond with the name of the owner. And then CSD rejects that. So we're trying to help them to find a mechanism uh, to, to solve that. Then on the sixth issue, the school should be prioritized for the supply of an additional grade R classroom and an admin block. Um, as honorable members will know, we have supported the school with a small ablution block but the problem we have is that the school is constructed on private property, so we are limited in terms of what we can do in as far as infrastructure in, uh, is concerned. Furthermore, the school is a small school that in terms of the DBE policy, 
um, is uh, to be rationalized. Um, and therefore, it makes it even more, more difficult. In terms of the, the policy for rationalization of small and unviable schools, um, the number, the cutoff number for primary schools is 135 learners, and they have fewer than that, and 200 for high schools. But um, as part of the, uh, the DBE process, which is currently um, monitored. Um, the province has had some difficulty because our process has gotten stuck. And then we did have a meeting with DBE where they have graciously sent us officials to come and support us. Uh, we had a meeting with Mr. Ndlebe and Mr. Baloy on the 19th of May, and we have agreed on, on a way to, to, to get this process on track. Safe to say, um, Honorable Chair, that um, in terms of the rationalization process, it's not a foregone conclusion that Eitzig Primary School might be, might be merged with, an, with another school. There is a process through which we have to undertake um, uh, the research and the viability and also meeting with the community before the final decision in this regard uh, uh, can be taken or will be taken. Then um, the other school, the next school was Freersdale Combined School. First issue was also the review of post provisioning norms with a view to assist the school with extra educators as requested by the school. And in terms of the post establishment norms, one additional post was allocated to the school. Second issue, collaboration with relevant stakeholders to ensure the strengthening of maths and science subjects in the province. And then uh, the strengthening of maths and science subject in the province is included in the provincial turnaround strategy. Honorable Chair will remember this matter also came up um, in some of the other schools that we have visited. We are challenged as the Northern Cape in terms of our participation rate. Uh, for this particular school, grade eight to nine learners were performing well in maths and science. Um, those who perform well will be identified and supported through additional tuition. And they will also be encouraged to participate in maths and science Olympiad um, through our, our curriculum unit. And then also in terms of our grade 10 and 12 learners at the school, uh, further supported through our weekend classes and vacation camps, especially our interventions for, for our uh, um, matric learners. Third, a recommendation to ensure that transport service providers are paid any money owed to them. Um, we have established that there are three learner transport routes to the school. On two of the routes, the school is the operator, and operators are paid or have been paid within the 30-day um, period directive, provided that their invoices are received on time. Um, fourth issue, to ensure that the school was assisted with the supply of computers for the computer center, um, the, department is, the department is in the process of investigating and assessment is made on the school's computer needs. And then uh, based on that assessment, we will procure uh, computers for their computer center. It might be a limited number of, for during the 22-23 uh, financial year. Fifth issue, to ensure that the school received a pedestrian crossing. Uh, as the learners have to cross uh, uh, over the N4, as uh, N14 has indicated, um, there's a meeting scheduled with the Department of Transport Safety and Liaison uh, to as uh, assist the school to implement a pedestrian crossing for the safety of learners and pedestrians visiting the school. This is an ongoing uh, matter. Issue number six, to assist the school with the upgrading and developing of the sports grounds, computer center, and supply the school with necessary chemicals for, for science uh, and, and apparatus and equipment. Uh, the school receives a maintenance allocation of 109,050 um, and can address some of the minor ma maintenance challenges with this allocation. Again, the school is constructed on private property and therefore um, from the EIG, we can only assist them with, with maintenance. Mobile facilities through prioritization by the district could be considered as a potential computer classroom provided um, uh, such um, facility can be adequately uh, secured as that is also one of the challenges. Um, we then went to Stellum Intermediate School. Um, 
Issue number one was that the department intervened to address delivery of shortages in furniture items such as tables and chairs. Um, the school indicated that they have grown in learner numbers. Um, the school receives a maintenance allocation of 169,093, and they could address some of the minor maintenance challenges with this allocation. Uh, this school was constructed through the then ACD program and was furnished when they were built, um, when it was built with new and sufficient furniture upon completion, which happened in 2015. In terms of the current EIG uh, conditions, honorable chair and members, Furniture in terms of the grant can only be procured uh, for newly built infrastructure and cannot be utilized for existing need. I must also say um, uh, after the, 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 the COVID period has passed, uh, Honorable Chair, um, from the side of, of DBE, there was an acknowledgement that when the schools returned to full operation, there were a, a particular challenge with regards to the issue of sufficient furniture, um, uh, especially uh, learner furniture at our schools. And there was a task team established by DBE. And one of the things that, that is being considered is what can be done because this falls outside of the, uh, the education infrastructure grant. But there is an acknowledgement that due to the growth in learner totals, existing schools um, will need some kind of a support um, in terms of uh, additional uh, furniture needs. So um, for now, we, as the province, we are also looking at um, the reallocation of furniture from schools where, where it is possible. Uh, we are looking at donations and we are looking at a refurbishment program. We did sign an agreement with the Department of Labor on the back of an existing agreement that our national DGS with the Department of Labor um, for the supply of new furniture where needed, um, but also for the refurbishment of furniture. And we will further, further explore the issue of refurbishment with the Department of, of Labor as the current agreement that we have signed with them recently uh, covers that, but we have to follow it up uh, with, 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 with actual uh, financial allocation for the, for the refurbishment. We have also received um, donations um, in the form of uh, desktops, and we have collected throughout the districts, we have collected the frames, um, frames that were lying around at schools, uh, which we can still use. And uh, those will be the basis of the materials uh, for, for us to further liaise with the Department of Labor in as far as refurbishment is concerned. Further on Sternum um, Intermediate School, uh, issue number two, that the pace of providing infrastructure support with regards to the sanitation, water tanks, extra toilets, and overcrowded classrooms receives uh, priority. Again, um, Honorable Chair, this is a school that is subject to the rationalization process, um, not so much rationalization, but rather realignment. The school goes from grade R to grade nine, and part of the uh, rationalization and realignment policy is that um, the school would in all probability be classified to be a primary school which means that their, their grade eights and nines will have to be moved to a high school uh, because that is part of our realignment process as education. Um, and this will hopefully open up necessary classrooms and address overcrowding in some of the grades. However, um, obviously before you can relocate learners, uh, there needs to be engagement as well with the parents um, and the community, and we need to make sure also that we then do not create a problem now at virtual problems where these learners have to go to. So there is a master plan to be compiled um, to investigate the mentioned overcrowded classrooms and, and lack of sufficient ablution facilities. Um, it was found that the learner toilets is sufficient in line with the norms and standards. A specification was compiled um, and uh, honorable members will remember the hazard of the, the, the water tank. I can just say that although the report is saying um, we are currently in the process of, of, of completing this work, the work has actually now been completed and the water tank um, has been fixed. 
In as far as the sanitation issues are concerned, honorable members will remember that the school principal mentioned, I think it was the issue of the quality of water. Uh, there were some disturbing visuals. Uh, we have not been able to address that matter adequately as um, there were engagements with the municipality as this is a municipal function, but we will go back and see what else is there that we can do um, uh, to look at the water quality that's provided uh, to the school. Issue number three, to ensure that measures are in place for updating skills and professional development of teachers so that they are empowered to teach inclusively and help those learners with learning barriers. Um, first of all, the school has to be assisted by our inclusive education unit. And they started the work of upskilling the teachers uh, to do what we call the CS um, uh, exercise, the screening, identification, assessment, and support uh, to learners with, with learning barrier, barriers, after which a program then needs to be uh, um, compiled for, 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 for helping those learners. Um, the fourth issue, um, the school reported their challenges that they are having with regards to vandalism, burglary, and theft at the school. Um, the school is also linked to, to a police station. Uh, we have also requested the patrols, um, but um, Honorable Chair, I, I have to indicate that the issue of vandalism is still a challenge. We are trying to address that through what we call our QLTC structures and getting them up and running in the various uh, communities in order to do um, advocacy. Um, but we've also just basically had some informal discussions to say uh, the cost of vandalism. I think last time there was a parliamentary question um, across the country and in the Northern Cape, we reported that 45 schools have been vandalized just during the December holiday period. It's a challenge that we are having that we are considering um, because it does mean that that if the cost of, of just repairs to those schools is in the vicinity of, 13, of, of 29 million, close to 30 million, we might want to consider how differently can we use the 30 million. Uh, we have discussed as a department looking at the higher schools um, identified through the police reports that we are getting and maybe beginning to then safe try and safeguard uh, those schools through our infrastructure grant for which we would then have to require and request a deviation. Um, issue number five, to ensure the upgrading of sports facilities to enable learner participation in school sports. Again, the upgrading of sports facilities, given our restricted budget is not a priority in terms of the minimum uniform norms and standards. This does not, however, mean that we will not uh, necessarily try and uh, encourage or assist the school um, in terms of upgrading, and this is where we, we, we would normally ask the districts also to support schools because in the vicinity of, of, of each of the districts in the Northern Cape, we are beginning um, discussions to say if there are organizations like funding organization, mining organizations, solar companies that can support our schools, that we need to, to focus on the infrastructure needs of, of the schools concerned. Issue number six, ensure that communication between the school and the parents um, is strengthened, in call, including calling meetings uh, to accessible venues where parents can come. Um, I did mention the issue of the QLTC structures, but also the school principal put strategies in place to meet. Uh, meetings are held regularly at the school. From the department side, we have um, at each of our schools through the through the um, uh, presidential Youth Employment Initiative, the PYEI. Uh, we have allocated uh, what we call a youth and child care worker for each and every school um, in the province. And we now want to upskill and train these uh, youth care workers. There's already uh, 300 of them. We have been trained one group through, through an, a, an agreement which DBE has signed on behalf of all provinces. And then also the other group has been trained by, by our ESS um, unit. We also have um, an NPO, Eye on the Child, uh, which helps with visits um, to, to the parents um, of, of the school. And the personnel indicated, the principal indicated that they do try and do home visits um, as well. Then we went um, also to Swoffer Bay Primary School. 
Issue number one, uh, to ensure that the school was prioritized for the extra mobile classroom that they have requested. Um, the mobile classroom is prioritized for the school. Again, it's a school constructed on private land. Uh, we have to, to come up with a report on what our plans are to rationalize um, or not the school. And if we decide not to, uh, to come up with, with um, uh, uh, reasons as to, as to why uh, we might not want to engage with that process um, immediately. Uh, secondly, uh, the school requested their full contingent of EAs, that's education assistants, um, and GAs, uh, where there were shortages, that these posts be filled as soon as possible. Um, we have appointed all six educator assistants, or rather the school did, because the recruitment happens at that level, and three general assistants were allocated and they have now been appointed as part of phase, phase two of the PYEI. Uh, to ensure that the school buildings receive the necessary refurbishment renovations, um, the school, it's not really much, only receives a maintenance allocation of 29,554. And we did ask them that they must begin to deal with the minor maintenance challenges uh, within this allocation. Uh, they did ask for, for um, additional, uh, or they did ask for an admin block and extra toilets for staff. They were also requesting library, school, or perimeter fencing, sporting facilities. They also requested a kitchen to prepare the meals for learners as a matter of urgency. And so we have, we have put on our MTF project list the supply of two mobile classrooms, a small ablution block, a nutrition kitchen, and then major maintenance where need. Maybe just here to indicate um, honorable chair and members, even though uh, the school is also um, on, on private land, as we have indicated. But uh, obviously the issue of, of ablution, um, uh, what we call minimum sanitation, uh, we have to assist them with that. Um, and as far as the NSMP program is concerned, uh, there are certain standards for the kitchen where food for learners are being prepared, and that's why we are prioritizing that. Um, at Camus Combined School, uh, issue number one was to ensure that the school was supplied with a mobile kitchen unit and extra ablution uh, facilities. The master plan is compiled to anal analyze the need uh, for ablution uh, facilities at the school, and then we uh, in the process of investigating um, if we could relocate an unutilized mobile at another school uh, to use uh, as a kitchen in the interim. To ensure the full complement, issue number two of EAs was employed by the school. The school was allocated 10 EAs, um, um, education assistants, and seven general assistants. Uh, they have only appointed nine uh, EAs thus far and five GAs in phase two of the Presidential Youth Employment Initiative. Um, issue three, outstanding shortages of textbooks and workbooks uh, for learners. Um, they, they had an issue with that. Um, the school received an LSM um, allocation of 97,990 for textbooks. They have now uh, the school procures their textbooks directly because you know that they can choose whether we should procure or whether they should procure. And they have exercised their choice to directly uh, procure from suppliers. And um, according to our latest information, all workbooks were delivered to the school um, as per their projected data. And then there were no additional requests or no requests for additional workbooks uh, for, the, for Camus Combined School uh, was received. By the, by the district. Issue number four, uh, to ensure that the school was assisted with extra learner transport to accommodate learners after extramural activities. Unfortunately, um, here, Honorable Chair, um, in terms of the learner transport contracts that the department enter into, uh, we are not really able to provide for, for, for extramural activities. I think it's a longstanding uh, challenge that where learners are transported to and fro uh, from school, it's always a challenge as to how uh, do you then expose at least such learners who have to leave immediately um, after school um, when it's difficult that a group 
uh, maybe a small group is, is involved in some extramural activity, then the whole group must wait. Um, for now, we don't have an answer uh, for that, Honorable Chair, um, but my, my off-the-cuff response would probably be that for those as for this particular school, we might want to ask them whether they couldn't do limited um, activities like maybe chess or so uh, during breaks um, or find some other arrangement or agreement uh, with, the, with the transport uh, provider. At Sol Diamond High School, um, there was a request that the department should support the school with technical subject advisors. Um, with regards to the subject advisors, the department recently received funding uh, from the Premier and Provincial Treasury to fill vacant, a uh, critical vacant subject advisor post. Uh, previously, Honorable Chair and members, um, we, we really, we, we still are battling with that situation, but at least now there's been some relief. Honorable members will know that there is a, a moratorium on the filling of positions. We have made a submission uh, to Premier and, and, and Treasury uh, MEC Finance uh, through our MEC. And we are very grateful that, that um, at least an amount of money was given uh, through which the department will systematically fill those positions that we have agreed are critical positions um, mainly at our district offices where capacity has been severely, severely uh, um, depleted, Honorable Chair, because as people exit the system, uh, these positions were not filled. And uh, it was very clear, still is, and we are now in the process of, uh, uh, of filling those positions. Uh, about 400 posts were advertised, and, and at least uh, we are now in the process of shortlisting shortly we'll interview and hopefully the situation that has been um, evident um, and where people have been acting for inordinately long periods, uh, we at least will be able to mitigate um, some, of, uh, some of it, uh, not all of it, but at least a considerable chunk um, of challenges with regards to that. Um, I did indicate that the post needs to be filled um, by between the 1st of June and July. And um, it is quite a challenge, I, I must just say, uh, um, Honorable Chair, when we look at the number of positions, it, it's scary because you, you find that you might have 72 positions and you have more than 2,000 applicants. Um, it also shows us the challenge that we have with regards to unemployment and so on. Uh, second issue was to ensure that the grade eights of the school um, are integrated into secondary uh, schooling and the district in collaboration with institutional development and support unit at our provincial um, office. Again, it's the realignment process. Must, sure, must make sure that the grade eight learners are relocated from the primary school to high school during the year of 2023. And again, um, this needs to be preceded by proper uh, planning as well as proper consultation uh, with, the, with the parent community of, of, of the grade eights. Issue number three, the vacant uh, post. Three vacant departmental head posts at the school will be advertised as part of our 2022 vacancy circular. Uh, this gazette has to come out in June and those posts will then be included there. The support staff vacancies um, for Sol Daman uh, was also addressed through the placement of assistance through the PYEI. Um, I don't have the exact numbers, Honorable Chair, but we, we will get the, the exact numbers. Uh, number four, to ensure the infrastructure needs of the school are addressed within reasonable time, the school receives a maintenance allocation uh, of 228,014 rand, and we have also requested them to address the mi minor maintenance uh, challenge. There is a project on our project list for the maintenance of the hostel. Um, and we have already, although the report says infrastructure needs were not reported to the department, we have inst instructed our inspector, Mr. Adams, uh, to visit the hostel and he's in the process of finalizing the specs uh, for, the, for the project of, maintain of maintenance at the hostel. Um, 
The issue number five was the capacitation of the SGB to support issues of school safety um, and security. There was a, a training uh, scheduled honorable chair for April, but due to industrial action, we had um, our biggest uh, educator union on work to rule, um, uh, which unfortunately uh, precluded us from, from engaging with, with schools. However, we, we are grateful that um, that action has been suspended. I must also note that uh, the action was really aimed at um, very real issues which, which, which we have been faced with and which our educators and schools are faced with. And part of the outcome of, of the industrial action, in fact, was the fact that there was an accession uh, from the Premier and the, and the Department of Finance uh, through which we then got additional funding. So we will reschedule uh, the, the, the engagement with the school, but we've also indicated that um, the full SGB functionality exercise, there's an exercise um, that determines the functionality of the school, uh, that full exercise will be concluded uh, so that we will address the, 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 the needs of the SGB um, in a manner that is holistic and not just necessarily focusing on, on those three issues. Then in France's part, we visited Penil Landhut Primary School. First issue was the appointment of an additional PL1 educator for the multi-graded foundation phase. Uh, one additional post has been allocated to the school to assist with multi-grade teaching. Two, to ensure the school receives the additional classroom for grade R, a mobile unit in the interim, and the school be prioritized for a permanent structure. This includes supplying toilets at the school requested within reasonable time frames. Um, the school receives uh, maintenance allocations, very small, of 28,993, and we asked them also to address some of the minor maintenance uh, challenges. The instruction was given that a master plan must be compiled to investigate the feasibility of the existing structure um, and the future need of the school. And then the school will be receiving repairs and renovations this financial year, which they would not be able to fund out of the small maintenance allocation. Um, three, third issue, school kitchen. Um, there was a problem with the, with the school kitchen. It was advised that it should be refurbished or renovated. Um, an assessment and costing was done at the school and the refurbishment uh, is included in our MTF infrastructure project list for 22-23. For ensure the access road to the school received the necessary attention and upgrading. Uh, engagement with the Department of Roads and Public Works and the Hatron municipality will be arranged in order to request assistance in the maintenance of the road. So there was an indication or request that they should at least just uh, um, uh, grade uh, uh, the road if that is the minimum that they can do. Five, fifth issue, ensure review of the current progression policy by the National Department, as well as the moratorium on filling of posts by the provincial uh, department. I think the issue of the progression uh, policy, um, it's, it's up for discussion. Um, um, I think when we, when we talk about education policy, Maybe DDG uh, Gayer would want to comment on this. Um, the, there is a reason, Honorable Chair and members, why the department has decided on, on learner progression. Um, and this is what we are implementing. And we know that uh, there are challenges for this and sometimes complaints from educators, uh, but it's a, it's a matter of, of what is the policy and, and if it needs to be reviewed, it would be reviewed um, at the level and discussed at the level of ECOM. Um, the issue of moratorium for, for the, there is no hard moratorium of the filling of posts, but there are budgetary constraints that then necessitate special authoriz authorization from provincial treasury and office of the premier. So basically, as much as we say, um, there is a moratorium. It, it has been stressed that it's a soft moratorium. And the main reason for that is because we have a runaway budget compensation of employee, uh, employee budget uh, that the province is really challenged. And in the context of that, 
departments are not just allowed to, to fill uh, positions without going through a specific process of motivating. Um, Kimberley Technical High, to ensure that the school was supplied with extra workshops and, and laboratories, as well as extra classrooms, was a request from the school. There was an increase in learner numbers and the school needed to receive the necessary additional resources required for the subjects offered. The district office has identified the need for additional workshops due to budget availability and the education infrastructure grant conditions. For now, um, honorable chair and members, the grant conditions have, have changed. We are limited in terms of erecting new structures. Uh, we now, um, rightfully so, have to spend 60% of our EIG um, on, 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 on maintenance, and therefore um, new infrastructure um, has to be carefully planned on our infrastructure plan. And uh, for now, we will not be able to respond necessarily to this particular request um, until 2024-25 financial year, unless we get some uh, cash injection from elsewhere such discussions are, are also uh, are taking place at the level of the province. Issue number two, to ensure that the school was assisted with the appointment of educators with technical qualifications, all the educator posts are now filled at the school. Uh, ensure that staff establishment was calculated differently uh, for technical schools. Um, we, we need to indicate that in terms of the post um, establishment, um, norms and, and weightings there, those weightings are actually um, already included in, in the calculations, uh, honorable chair and members. It doesn't always give our schools uh, what they think or, or rather what they say they want. And where we have such challenges, uh, we actually go to them and relook really how they have how they have drawn up their timetable. Uh, whether the teachers are teaching at the norms as prescribed, as you know, um, there are norms for the percentage of teaching time that each educator, including the principal, has to teach. And uh, for now, that is what we can do to support uh, the schools. If there are exceptional cases where they motivate, um, then we might uh, consider it. There is a challenge I must indicate, Honorable Chair, um, at dual medium schools and parallel medium schools. It has come up several times. Uh, Honorable Chair might remember that at our visit, we also had um, the lady from Namakwa, Ms. Matebe, um, raising her issues about instruction in a different language of learning um, and, and, and the challenges that we are sitting with throughout the system where our educators are not necessarily capacitated to, 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 to teach. Um, in more than, than, than one language. We, we're having difficulty to attract such educators even in, in the districts of JTG and, and, and Francis Bar. Um, there, there is an issue with regards to the current quintiling system for schools. This is also a, a national uh, um, issue where schools are located uh, historically in a specific quintile, but their learner profile has changed quite dramatically. Um, but where we are able to assist such schools on, 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 on um, additional motivation, we try and, and assist uh, where we can. So this Kimberley Technical High School, um, in terms of the, the national table of targets, schools in quintile, Five should have received 254 rand per learner. Kimberley Technical High School was funded at the per capita of 491 rand uh, per learner, uh, precisely because of, of the fact that their learner profile has changed dramatically. But again, uh, for now, as with regards to the requintiling of schools, um, it's another matter that probably has to be discussed um, at, at uh, the policymaking level. Um, I think I have indicated um, for the 22-23 financial year, uh, we are anticipating that the school might receive a per capita of 513 compared to 266 because, because it's a technical school, there are all sorts of other things that, um, that, that allow us to give them additional weightings. The fact that they have technical subjects and so on also um, then 
uh, qualifies them for additional funding. Uh, fifth issue, to ensure the school was assisted with procurement of textbooks for new subjects, the uh, school procured its textbooks centrally for the 22 academic year and has access uh, to the updated catalog. We also held an LTSM workshop during May 2021 to assist new committee members, SGBs and, and, and the senior management team uh, with activities and guidelines of LTSM for the 2022 academic year. Here we go to floors high. Um, issue one, the school must be supplied with two extra mobile units. They want additional taps and Jojo tanks. The, the school, um, the mobile identified this by the school must be equipped with furniture and electricity. And the school building infrastructure received the necessary maintenance, refurbishment, and renovation within reasonable timeframes. The school received a maintenance allocation of 163,857 rand, 163,000. And we have asked them to address some of the minor maintenance challenges with this allocation. The district prioritized the relocation of mobiles in the district every year, and the, and the school must request additional mobile classrooms through the district office um, as the district prioritizes which school receives mobiles. The school also has a major maintenance project on our 22-23 MTF project list, and then uh, the specifications uh, is currently being compiled to assist with um, the water tanks and, and um, additional taps. Two, to ensure the school was assisted with recruitment of suitable educators for their critical subjects, the school was allocated one additional post. The school completed the recruitment process and the educator commenced duty um, on the 15th of March. Uh, third issue, to ensure the school was assisted with shortages of textbooks and any outstanding LTSM, the school was assisted with excess textbooks from the warehouse. An updated list of outstanding textbooks is, is still awaited uh, from the school. Or with the introduction of occupational subjects, the department to ensure the school was assisted with additional resources in the form of added space, extra workshops, as well as equipment, etc. An audit will be conducted to determine the resourcing of workshops, what they have and what they still need, as well as the provision of equipment and machinery. And where possible, we will assist the school through the MST Math Science Technology Grant. At Soplaiki Primary School, uh, issue one was the post-provisioning norms uh, for the school with a view to assist with extra educators. Um, the, the, the challenge at, at this particular school, I spoke about the post-provisioning norms, honorable chair and members. Um, the challenge at the school is that they lost 102 learners. Um, and of course, then uh, this also influences the educator staff establishment. In some cases, it, it results in schools losing an, an educator, um, which of course then uh, uh, gives them all sorts of other challenges depending on what the curriculum offering is. But for now, the school does not qualify, did not qualify for an additional uh, educator. To um, ensure the department's infrastructure team includes the school as part of the list uh, for infrastructure um, related challenges. This school receives a maintenance allocation of 206,877. And we have also asked them to address maintenance challenges. Um, the school has two projects on the 22-23 MTF project list for electrical repairs, as well as renovations and main, major uh, maintenance. The specs for the electrical project has been approved and is now in, in the stage of, of, of tender. Number three, to ensure that the school is assisted through social cohesion uh, pro programs to reduce incidents of vandalism, school safety, and adopt a COP strategy. The program of the unit responsible was redirected to include the school as from the 22nd of February. Fourth issue, um, ensure that the school needs plan is in place. Um, our officials assisted the school in the drafting of a business plan. The district improvement uh, plan was drafted. Um, the services rendered was eight learner assessments were conducted and, and learners appropriately supported. All of those activities there, psychosocial support was rendered. 
Um, we had meetings with with um, with the with the with the members, SBST members. Support strategies uh, was um, shared with the coordinator, and the sole plight to ECD practitioner was trained on SIAS, which is the tool used to 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 look at learner barriers. Um, there were certain challenges, but uh, we are in the process of addressing those challenges. The issue was textbooks, issue five. Uh, the school ordered their textbooks centrally and all textbooks were delivered uh, to the school. Uh, issue six, ensure that envisage procurement of furniture as school is going back. Um, they also had the issue um, where the department annually requests schools to submit their furniture needs. Um, the school did not submit any furniture need for the last three years. And of course, this resulted in the school not forming part of the furniture plan. In addition to that, um, as I've indicated, if it's not a new structure, honorable chair, then we have to make them part of our refurbishment plan. Um, and and uh, the matter was addressed with the school to say that they need to follow the necessary processes in terms of requesting. Um, seven. To ensure that the QLTC coordinator and team are effective to support the school, a pre-engagement visit to the school was done uh, for the resuscitation of their QLTC structure to provide support. Meetings were arranged uh, to address the challenges. And then um, the district QLTC, although we had the industrial action, uh, subsequent to that, the district QLTC coordinator has in fact been able to capacitate uh, the schools and will now also carry on resuscitating the uh, uh, QLTC quality learning teaching um, um, committee structure, which is which is aimed at assisting a number of the social issues that the school is faced with. The visit was to the Klamaling Special School for the Deaf and the Blind. Um, First recommendation to ensure the need for establishment of special school in the Northern Cape um, is addressed in reasonable time. Um, we just wanted to indicate that one special school, the construction for one special school cost 196 million. And this does not take into, the cons into consideration the operational cost of such an institution. We are in the process, honorable chair and members to explore alternative approaches such as the conversion of an underutilized hostel or school um, of an existing school. And we have included a special school in Pixley Kaseme and ZF Makawa districts on our 22-23 MTF project list. A new special school that will cater for visual and hearing handicapped as well as autism uh, learners, affected learners, is planned for ZFM. Planning on this project will start in the 22-23 financial year subject to the availability of budget. However, the department has an interim solution had a project at AJ Ferreira Secondary School in order to at least make the school accessible for physically disabled learners. A new special school that will cater for mentally handicapped learners in all three streams is planned for Pixley Kaseme and the planning will start in the 23-24 financial year, uh, also subject to the availability of budget. In the meantime, the department has identified Valitron Primary School in order to make the school accessible for disabled learners. Um, but again, engagement has started with the district to replace the school with Alpha Primary uh, located in the ARF. There were subsequent investigations and feasibility studies at, at um, Valitron. Um, Recommendation two, to ensure that challenges and remedial action needed around the learning it takes priority as a matter of urgency. Um, inclusive education unit in collaboration with curriculum will ensure that teachers are capacitated and supported and that learning needs are addressed. Three, to ensure the school procurement needs for braille and sign language uh, issues. The sign language catalog was given to the school. Braille and large print catalogs are shared on a regular basis with the school as and when received from Pioneer Books, which is the uh, provider. Number four, to ensure that educators are capacitated in workshops for curriculum support, uh, supply chain issues. Inclusive education in collaboration with curriculum will ensure that teachers 
are capacitated and supported. And I think what we probably would have to do here, um, Honorable Chair, I'm just thinking as I'm speaking that our inclusive education unit, I think they kind of underreporting on the issues that they are trying to do. We might want to, to draft a full report um, and, and then provide that to the, to the uh, committee for what we are doing uh, to support our learners with special needs. Five, to ensure that infrastructure needs of the school takes precedence. The challenges mentioned in terms of land is being investigated and assistance have been provided uh, to the school. Six, to ensure that learner transport support is reviewed, taking into consideration the circumstances of, of, of learners. Currently, we only have one public special school uh, that is benefiting from the learner transport program, which is the one in Clancia. Uh, the learner transport and inclusive education units were directed uh, by the EMT of the department to discuss the rendering of learner transport services to all public special schools. These units are currently busy profiling the special schools, focusing on the needs of individual learners and the possible extension of the transport program to, to these schools. The inclusion of special schools will require a phased approach and furthermore learner transport services will be available for daily transport to schools and back, uh, schools back um, and home only. Seven, to ensure the department provides a school with subject advisors and specialists. Um, the subject advisory support will be improved. The district has been requested to include the school in their support programs. The department recently refund, received funding um, from provincial treasury to fill the critical vacant subject advisor post. I have spoken about that. And then in terms of the management plan for the filling of the post, um, they were advertised and they need to be filled by July um, 2022. I may just also want to say in addition to this, um, Honorable Chair, there is also funding available through what we call the LSPIT grant, um, which makes provision for additional support um, at the level of the province, specifically uh, in inclusive education, like occupational therapists, and we have taken a decision that these posts need to be advertised ASAP. There are seven posts that have been identified, and um, we will be putting it through uh, the process of advertising, hopefully uh, before the end of, of July. Honorable Chair, that's where we will end. Thank you so much. No, thank you very much, HOT. Um, can I note hands, honorable members? That's the presentations from um, Free State and, and Northern Cape. They are responding on, on the recommendations we have made then after the the oversight in those provinces. Babu um, Ngobo, followed by Honorable Van der Waal. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Chairperson, and uh, thanks to the Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee uh, Deputy Minister and members of the department, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, President. Um, uh, look, uh, Chairperson, I, I, I first of all uh, wish to say uh, that uh, I will be uh, brave uh, and kind of general, try to uh, encapsulate uh, what I uh, 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 what I found to be uh, noteworthy in, 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 in most presentations. Uh, one, it, it, it's not, it's, it, it, it is worth noting that among problems identified, uh, in particular, I think I noted, now let me not call them by names. Uh, I noted the issue of safety. In fact, it, it, when, when the reports were presented, 
uh, it was in the form of um, uh, putting fans uh, and the issues of Lena transport. Uh, I just want to say we are uh, going through a, 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 a rough patch in South Africa where people have run amok. Uh, there is vandalism, a lot of it, and there is violence, in particular the GPV and children. And now to me, Chairperson, uh, I would say it, it, it's, it's commendable uh, that the schools that were visited um, and this, the, 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 the safety issues identified, uh, they seem to have been rectified uh, in the form of uh, erecting fans, although in some cases it, it, it will still be done. They are still talking about moving towards doing it. Uh, but I mean, uh, it's not worthy uh, 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 making that point. Why I'm making that point, uh, Chairperson, is because I wish to move to uh, saying that um, you see, you see, it, it would be good if uh, the provinces would assist when, uh, as, uh, when we choose schools uh, to try and be representative uh, be able to see uh, what is happening in the provinces, not along uh, the good roads, uh, towns, I mean, I mean uh, places where uh, we can only see not the West. Uh, so I know that it would be cumbersome, how much cumbersome it would be uh, to uh, to the uh, portfolio committee so that we can get the true picture. I know it's worse than this, uh, particularly in terms of what I have co I've called uh, safety in schools, uh, because uh, lives of the teachers, it's the lives of the learners, it's the uh, uh, um, uh, structures themselves, property uh, that, 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 that is in danger. Uh, Chairperson, uh, I, would, I would just like to uh, also touch on the, the second point and then uh, leave it to uh, other members who, who, who will uh, uh, um, contribute better because they were on spot. Capacitation of the SGBs. I think this one was um, uh, mentioned by the last presenter, whom we, all of them we thank very much. Uh, and I think it was with regards to Stairham, and, and unless I'm making a mistake, but uh, capacitation of the SGBs is an issue. Uh, I know for a fact, and uh, it's through experience because I've been in this space, uh, the department uh, does not do justice when it comes to capacitating uh, the school governing bodies. And then uh, it, 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 sometimes they are blamed for failure. And uh, there are if, some, some people even uh, think of taking away uh, the, their responsibilities of being responsible uh, for, 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 for the schools um, in terms of um, uh, what their duties are. So one would want to uh, make an appeal to the deputy minister who is present and the emissaries because they are uh, present uh, also here. Uh, that uh, let's let's see, uh, let's have a proper representativity uh, of the schools uh, so that uh, we we can actually contribute from a really. Uh, confi uh, um, informed uh, point of view. Uh, Chairperson, I thank you for this opportunity. My friend of you can proceed. Thank you, Chairperson, and thank you to the presenters, the Free State and the Northern Cape. Chair, my first question um, goes to the Northern Cape. It was quite comprehensive, especially for a member who has not attended. 
um, I just out of curiosity would like to know when she speaks of um, the visual impaired uh, learners, for example, um, she refers to the LTSM and Braille machines and writers. If she can just please just inform us if they ever use the latest uh, technology uh, in the IT world. And if so, um, what precisely are they using and how many of that at how many schools, more or less? Because I think that's the way we need to go. But um, I know it's very expensive, but we cannot always keep our special needs learners and teachers behind. Then to the free state, I think it was quite a surprisingly short presentation if you take the number of schools and the number of issues that we have found. But I want to concentrate on Letty Fouchier Special School. Um, and I'm not sure if the uh, on the presentation, because I can't go back now, the six asbestos classrooms were addressed. There was an issue about the water table and level, of course. A fence that was promised um, in November 2021 uh, that was on the department's agenda. And then um, um, there was an undertaking by the, I think it was the infrastructure director or manager, as confirmed. And I asked pertinently, what about, and I think it was the girls' hostel, which hasn't been able to be used for a long, long time. And there was this promise that the adjudication has been done, it's been appointed, and it would have been resolved before the end of the previous financial year, um, whether that has been done because there's no report back on it. If it's not been done, why not? Uh, what happened to the undertaking and when will it be done? It's unacceptable that children with special needs are neglected, MEC of the Free State, and I'm repeating it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, my friend of all. Principal? Muduna, Judo. Very rigorous, like I said, the two presentations. Indeed, one must just state up front that the their responses are, are very loud and clear, well oiled, and um, as they attempted to respond to the recommendations that were posted to them. However, Chairperson, allow me to touch on two points. And then, um, which po two points are uh, almost uh, synonymous in the two provinces, Northern Cape and Free State? The first point, Ubabangobo um, Mapolova has already touched on it safety in our schools or the school safety. Um, the, 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 the attempt and the uh, uh, means of trying to address that is clear. We are not going to overlook that. But however, um, you see, this in itself remains a very huge challenge, if not a problem, Chairperson. Uh, with particular reference to free state, I just wanted to be very specific. There is something which touched me the beginning of this year, where in a learner in a school in Free State, I might be lacking the specifics, but I know they know they will be able to assist. An incident where the learner differed with the teacher. And if I'm not mistaken, it was a science teacher a lady for that matter. She went, whether it's she or he, she or he went home and came back with the parent. And the end product is they ended up beating the teacher in the schoolyard. You, you, you see, it is one thing to try and secure our schools 
through fences, electric fences, or barricaded fences, as uh, uh, Babang Mabo has indicated. But it is another thing to secure the safety of the teachers and learners during the day, daylight, attacks by those who should be defending them. Now, my question uh, uh, as a follow up to that, uh, under the caption, safety in our schools or school safety, it's uh, how far did the department address that specific issue that I'm talking about? I'll pause there and go to the second one. You see, Chairperson, on the second one is with regard to the importance of uh, maths and science subjects. And the uh, UNI will agree that it is true, it cannot just be an overnight thing. We have observed that both Free State, Northern Cape, and uh, of course, not excluding Hauji, they have got a tendency of discouraging learners or schools from enrolling for this all important subject. We may try to justify it and say we have got enough numbers registered at the level of the DBE, but uh, I must state categorically, seated where I am, that uh, it should always be very close to our hearts, that our schools must be encouraged to enroll for math and science. One of the reasons why we often go all out in the name of importing our foreign nationals, an example of Zimbabwe, to come and assist with regard to teaching of math and science. It's simply because we might have reached a point some times back where we overlooked that. And as a result, now we are paying the price. We can't even produce enough educators to address this challenge that we're facing. So, but I want to indicate that we have noted and we would further encourage both Free State and Northern Cape because they are on the platform here, that they must move with speed to make it a point that the enrollment of maths and science and all those other related technological subjects becomes a priority for them so that this, those provinces and this country will not be in need going forward where we will keep on making what an, an unnecessary mutual borrowings and importing people who must come and develop our own country. This is the submission that I would make, Chairperson, and uh, I want to thank you for the opportunity given. Bye, Rangi. Rosuela. <clears throat> thank, thank you, Chairperson. And let me also welcome the presentation from the two provinces. Indeed, um, we note the progress being made in order to address the issues that were raised after our oversight from the two provinces. Perhaps starting from where Honorable Murasata left, maybe put it differently, there, there is a view that in free state, for example, there are fewer learners taking mathematics and science. I would like to hear the comment of the DDG on that matter. And if this view is uh, correct, probably I would like to know what is the cause of, of, of that. The second point I wish to raise is with regard to the Northern Cape, in particular, eight sec primary schools. Given the fact that this school is in a privately owned land, and it is almost difficult for the department to 
to assist in terms of the infrastructure. The HOD said that uh, the school is too small and uh, it could be rationalized. But then she also indicated in the same breath that uh, they cannot just simply rationalize uh, the school because it requires a, a process for them to be able to do that. Well, then I would like to know from the HOD, what is the exact position of the Department of Education in that province? Is the school going to be rationalized or not? That's probably that I want to hear coming out explicitly to say the school will be uh, rationalized or it will not be rationalized. And finally, I take note, I, I just forgot the, the, the school in Free State where the position uh, has been advertised and uh, it was supposed to be finalized by the 26th of, of May. Probably uh, I would like to hear whether there is a new report that suggests that that process indeed was finalized on that day or not. Thank you, Chair. No, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much uh, 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 for from all the members that has participated uh, in the in the questions um, session. And I must also thank the both of the provinces for the for the for their input uh, in the in the recommendations that we have made and um, what they have um, they have done since we have left their their provinces. With regards to Free State Province, um, the issues that I would raise, particularly to the to the Bainsley, um, where you are saying you are still waiting for the for the delivery of of mobiles, we have recommended the, that you must have mobile classrooms and. You you are mentioning that you are still um, waiting for that delivery um, of the of the of the mobiles. Ideally, how long um, does it take for a department to to procure and be able to be in a position of of the, the mobile classrooms. I'm raising this because um, last weekend we were working in, in fact, till this morning, uh, we were working in, in KZN for, for on this committee of the, the ad hoc committee on, on floods. And um, it is. It was sixth week, so it's actually seventh week from um, yesterday that KZN had experienced floods, and for some reason they 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 have uh, mobile classrooms already in all the schools that have been um, affected, and it's a lot of schools. I think it's about two hundred and eighty-three schools that have been affected by floods. So I'm raising it um, 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 ideally in, 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 in your province, how, how long would you take to, um, to have um, um, mobile classrooms in a school's way there is a need for, for a mobile um, classroom? And there is a school uh, which is assisted by, by pick and pay and and then um, and the clinic um, of some sort. 
what I want to understand from you in terms of the of the of their assistance, does it cover the skills that are needed? Um, the the assistance that they are giving. Are you satisfied as a department that whatever that they are assisting with, which I know they had, obviously, some sort of an agreement with you what needs to be covered. But does it does it cover the the skills? Um, that uh, um, 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 are needed. And then, Chair, with regards to, to, I mean, I'm saying Chair now, with regards to the, to the Northern Cape, I think uh, uh, that 